Hello, I'm Anne Kerr and welcome to my art studio. I often hear people say that they don't want to start painting in watercolour because it's very difficult to correct mistakes and that you can't remove watercolour. Well, my friends, that is absolute nonsense. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can remove watercolour and I'll give you some ideas of how you can use that to enhance your paintings. So, are you ready? Now, removing watercolour from watercolour paper is not difficult, but I must say, provided that you use good quality watercolour paper. If you use a lesser quality paper, then the things I'm going to show you will not be as easy and your paper will very quickly begin to break up. So all these things that I'm going to show you are actually done on 100% cotton watercolour paper. I have tried them on other kinds of paper and they just do not work as well and I have to be much more careful because the paper will break up more easily. Obviously I haven't tried every paper that's on the market, I wish I had the money to do that, but it certainly worked on all the cotton papers that I've ever used. So here we go. Now the first thing I want to do is to, is to show you how strong and robust your watercolour paper really is. This is a piece of paper that was just lying around in the studio. I've obviously been using it for testing out colours and trying out brush strokes and <laughs> there are lots of pieces of paper like this in my studio. Um, can you notice up here that I've actually already erased two of these green leaves? You might just be able to see the little mark that's left there. Now I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Now I would have taken this paper over to the kitchen sink, run the cold water tap on it, rubbed away with a sponge and removed it that way. But because my sink is at the far end of the studio, what I've done is I've got a large pan of water. <laughs> so this is going to take the place of the kitchen sink. And I'm going to put my watercolour paper in here and get it really, really wet. Oh, I can hear you saying, oh, I wouldn't want to do something like that. Yes, you can. Absolutely you can. So now I'm going to just remove the big pan. Take out my piece of paper and take a sponge, just an ordinary kitchen sponge, and I'm going to start removing the paint that's on my paper. Now some colours are going to remove more easily than others and that's all to do with whether you've used a staining colour or not. If you've used a staining colour like phthalo blue or phthalo green, something along those lines, then yes it won't be quite as easy to erase. And that's why I don't have staining colours in my, in my paint box. Can you see how strong and robust this paper is? So don't ever be afraid to, you know, make it really wet. Remove as much of the paint as you can by sponging. And that's not actually rubbing on the surface. And then when you've got as much up as you can with sponging, it's an ordinary kitchen sponge. And you can give it a bit of a rub. Look at this, look, look. Now tell me you can't erase watercolour. Now obviously, as I said, some of these colours are more staining than others. And to give you an idea of the paper I'm using, this is Fabriano Artistico, 100% cotton paper. Look. <laughs> now nothing's rubbing off the surface nothing whatsoever and I'm being pretty brutal with this look I can even use the rough side now would you have thought that you could do that 
This is why I always say to people, buy the best quality paper you can, because you can do this to it. And if I had a painting I really didn't like, I can just remove it. Now, I'm not going to bore you to death by going on doing more like this, but you can see that where I had removed the original ones, here, up in the corner, look, there was, there was virtually nothing left. And if I went on doing this for another, another five minutes, I'll be back to, almost back to white paper. Now, I've been working on this for uh, just a few minutes, and I hope you can see now that, okay, we haven't got right back to white paper, but it's certainly good enough to remove any mistakes that you've done. Now, I've deliberately used a rough paper, because rough paper has lots of little hills and valleys in it, and the paint goes right down into the little valleys. So on rough paper, it's actually more difficult to erase than if you're doing it on smooth paper. So if you like, we've tackled the worst possible scenario. And look, I think that's pretty good. But let me just very quickly show you why it was possible for me to do that. If you remember, I said I was using 100% cotton paper. Well, in cotton paper, there are long fibres. And those fibres are all interwoven with each other throughout the paper. And they're all glued together with, with something called glue size. Now, if you've got a, a paper of lesser quality, and it's got lots of bits of wood chip or all sorts of other things which they use in paper, all the little bits are much smaller. They're not long fibres like you get in, in, the, uh, in the cotton papers. And if your paper is made up of all these little bits, all these little chips, then when you rub on that surface, it will very quickly loosen up and you'll lose the nice smooth texture of your paper and it'll start to break down. But with cotton paper, where, you're, where you have long fibres and you rub on the surface of that, it takes quite a bit of abuse to actually get those fibres to move and to break up. So that's the difference between 100% cotton paper and paper that's made of wood pulp and other things. OK, enough of, the, enough of the theory. Let's get back to the practical. So you can see very easily that watercolour can be erased from watercolour paper, provided that it's not one of the very staining colours. So that's one thing you just have to be a little bit careful about. You can always test your colours on a bit of paper, let the colour dry and then try wiping it off. If it doesn't come off very easily, then obviously it's a staining colour. And personally, I choose not to have staining colours in my paint box, but that's just me. Everybody has their own choices and that's how it should be. Now I'll show you several ways in which you can use the removal of watercolour to enhance your paintings. Now here I've got, this is something I used in a, um, a previous video just to explain colour mixing, so I thought I would use this. Um, no point in using another piece of paper, I may as well use this one. This is a mixture of cobalt blue and lemon yellow. This is a mixture of cobalt blue, lemon yellow and burnt sienna. And this is just a little leaf that's used that I've painted with those two colours. Now I've already removed some paint from there and in order to remove paint from a painting you need a brush that has got little hairs that are not too long and it's quite stiff. So a brush that's used for acrylics or even a brush that's used for oils would work. There's an oil brush and I'm going to use that in a moment. So you want to make sure the little hairs are not very long, but they're nice and stiff and there's lots of snap to it. So you make your brush damp and the important thing is you take off the water. You don't want a drippy brush, you want it to be just a bit damp. And then you can scrub away and you can remove paint. 
See that? Now I'm going to wash the paint off my brush, remove the water, and go back in again. And you can do that as often as you want, and you can get right back to white paper, provided you haven't used a paint that's staining. Now do the same with this one. It works even better on, on this lovely dark, lovely dark colour. So blot away with your, with your tissue, wash the paint off your brush, that's important, otherwise you're going to be putting, it uh, putting paint back in again. And just go back and scrub away again, and you'll get almost back to white paper. <laughs> and on here you can see that I've, I've actually removed the central bit of the leaf here, just by doing exactly that. I'll do another one there, look. And just blot away with your tissue. And you can use this, you can use this technique anywhere in your watercolour paintings. So don't ever be worried that you can't remove watercolour. I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably even remove the whole of the side of that leaf. Scrub away with my brush blot away with my tissue and if I went on doing that for long enough I would actually get rid of that actual part of the leaf. You can see, you can see here, can you see there used to be a leaf there and I worked away at that like I was doing there, I worked away at that and it disappeared. <laughs> So this is a this is a colour called Moon Glow, which is a Daniel Smith colour, and I love to use this for my shadows. And if you've got a um, shadow in a cloud or something, and it's a bit too dark, well, you can just remove some of it. Look, a fairly stiff brush, a little bit of water, and a tissue. Now, how easy is that? So, when people say, oh, I don't want to do watercolour because I've heard that once the paint is on the paper, there's not much you can do about it. You can't remove it. Nonsense. The only paint you can't remove, as I said earlier, is the paint that's staining. Here's another idea. Maybe that was some water that I'd painted. And I want to um, put some little wind lines in the water. Well, exactly the same thing. Take the paint out, blot it with a tissue. Take the paint off your brush, take the water off your brush, and scrub away. Now this paint has been dry for at least a week. So you don't have to do it when the paint is wet. You can very easily do it when it's dry. There we go. How effective is that for little wind lines on the water? Now with this one, you can see I've, <laughs> Anne's, Anne's at her models again, been making models again. <laughs> Imagine that you've got some background uh, um, distant trees or, or you know something dark in the background and you've got some water here or something and maybe you've got a boat and you want to put a mast onto the boat and you want the mast to come up over the water and over the dark trees well if you get a couple of pieces of cardboard or a couple of pieces of, of um, paper <coughs> excuse me and you put them there like that and you can either do it with a brush or you could do it with a sponge and you just wipe like this as I said you could do it with a brush let's do it with the brush and then blot away and then remove 
There we go. <laughs> See how easy that is. And you could have had a boat down here with a big long mast that's going up over the background. And that's how you can remove the paint. I did say that I would show you how you can do it with a, an oil brush, which is very stiff. This is hog hair. So if you actually put the hog hair on there and scrubbed away, you can do exactly the same thing. Let's get a clean tissue. Scrub away with a hog hair brush and blot. Look, look at that. Almost completely gone back to white paper. One very useful little trick that I often use if I'm putting boats in the background. Imagine I want to put a couple of little sailing boats in the background there. If I put two little bits of, of paper and I take my brush and I scrub away in here and then I take my tissue and I blot that and I remove my little templates and then with a brush I could paint my little boat underneath and look <laughs> I've got a little I've got a little boat in the background up against the trees and you could do that as often as you wanted along here you could make lots and lots of little sails in the background just by putting a little template there and scrubbing away or you could do it with a brush and removing the little white sail and then painting your boat in afterwards. Blot it off. <laughs> How easy is that? Mind you, the boat does look a bit like a wonky canoe, but you can, you can see exactly what I mean. I'm not bothered about the boat. It's the, it's the little sail I want to show you. And you could, you, know, you could do that. You could make little tiny ones, you could make bigger ones, and it is very, very effective. Another way that you can use the magic of removing watercolour from your paintings is if you had a sky. Now this is my lovely hake brush by the way. I use my hake brush most of the time when I'm doing backgrounds because it covers such a large area in such a small amount of time and with only a few strokes. Now if I want to put some clouds in here I could, if I wanted to, use a tissue and I could take my tissue and I could blot away my clouds like that, which is actually very effective. Or I can take my brush and I can take the water off my brush and that is important. It must just be a damp brush, not a wet one. And I could wriggle away with my brush and I could take my clouds out that way. When you use a tissue your clouds are whiter because you've taken out more paint this is more absorbent than this so this will suck out more water and this will suck out less water so if you want white clouds use a tissue if you want clouds that are a little bit more subtle then use a brush let's go back to this one Something else you can do to remove your watercolour is you can use a scalpel and you can just scrape. So if I wanted to put in some tree trunks and things, I could just scrape them in, into the background. Scrape away the paint and all you're doing is just removing the paint and letting the white paper underneath show through. You could use it for wind lines, taking off the top surface of your paper. 
Quite drastic that, but it works. There we go. It always works best where you've got the darkest of colours. Because it, obviously it, it shows up against dark colours. Now one last way that I actually use removal of paint in my, in my paintings. This is an old picture that I did of a mountain. And I just want to use this to demonstrate how I got this effect of broken snow. I used a piece of sandpaper. And all I did was that. I rubbed the sandpaper onto the darkest areas of my painting and I got the effect of broken snow. You can also use this effect if you've got some rocks and you've got a wave breaking on the rocks. You could use this behind the rock against a dark sky to have spray coming up from the rocks. <coughs> Excuse me. Spray breaking up from the rocks. But it will only probably show up clearly if you do it on something that's dark, like a dark sky behind your rock. So that is a very effective way of, again, removing watercolour to, to enhance your paintings. So you might say, why is it when I try and do that, it doesn't work? Well, there are two reasons. One is that you're using a paint that's staining your paper and therefore you cannot lift it. As I said before, something like phthalo blue or phthalo green. Beautiful colours, yes, but they are staining and they are quite difficult to lift. And the other reason is that you're probably using a lesser quality paper and it begins to break up when you try and do anything like this. The surface of the paper begins to break up. As I described earlier, where you've got your cotton, <coughs> excuse me, where you've got your cotton paper and your wood pulp or your mixture of um, ingredients in the paper, this is much more difficult to break up. You can abuse, you can really abuse this, but it's quite difficult to do anything on this. It very quickly begins to break up. So you can see how you can use the removal of watercolour to either correct mistakes or to put special effects into your paintings um, to make them look even more interesting and exciting. When I did the little one of removing what could have been a mast of a ship or the little sails in the background, that same technique could be used if you were painting rocks and you could use it to take off the little highlight on the top of the rocks. Just like I removed that little, little patch of colour there, you could remove a little patch of colour on the top of the rocks to show where the light is hitting it. I'm sure you will find many, many more reasons to use this technique. Go and experiment. It's really quite exciting. If you found this video helpful and you'd like some more videos like that, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon because that will notify you when I upload another video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Now remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now. <laughs>